Hey guys, hope you're all doing very well. Thought I'd do a Bitcoin video update today as we are at a very interesting point indeed. As we know, we came in very, very close to that 100K mark, literally $200 short of it approximately. And since then, we had that Jim Cramer tweet saying Bitcoin is looking very bullish and subsequently it sold off. As we all know, the inverse Jim Cramer effect is very powerful and it didn't fail there. It obviously took us all the way down. However, Jim Cramer could turn out to be right, which is what I believe, because I do think we are going to rebound from these levels. And I'll talk about that in today's video. But before we home in on the lower time frame here with this, the four hourly, I want to look at the bigger scheme of things just to recap on the kind of target that we're looking out for post this US election, which has been the most substantial thing and the reason for this trend that we are currently seeing. So We've obviously now got a pro crypto president in the US. Uh, it's a very positive sign for crypto. Ultimately, the bigger play that we're looking out for, I'm going to zoom out to the weekly here. Okay, so the way I'm looking at this is we're playing out an ending diagonal, which starts from here. In order to appreciate this, in fact, we're going to look at the whole move from the Genesis. We're going to just recap. I've gone into this in detail in previous videos, but just so everyone's up to speed, we're going to go through it once more. Ultimately, major wave one, two, three, fourth wave is a converging triangle, which finishes here. Then we go into a fifth wave ending diagonal. One, two, working on our third. Then we've got a fourth and fifth to follow. Okay. Obviously, it looks very, very kind of irregular on the log scale, on the linear scale. I have to keep demonstrating this, otherwise people just get confused. Linear scale, very clear impulse, one, two, three, four, five to make the wave one. Very clear corrective wave, wave two. Wave three, very clearly, in, incredibly impulsive all the way up to here. Top of the third wave being here. And then you can see this converging pattern of waves here, This the wave four. So I have it as an A, B, C, D and E, obviously a very small E wave. And then we get this move up that follows, which is very three wave-ish, hence the ending diagonal scenario made up of a subwave count of a three, 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 three. Now, this is interesting because this is just post COVID, okay, that this kind of developed, okay, this ending diagonal. And we're looking at the same thing on the Dow Jones. If I pull up the Dow Jones here, we're looking at exactly the same principle. So ending diagonal starting, this is the post COVID sell off March, 2020. And then the ending diagonal begins with the first wave clearly looking pretty corrective going up. But as you can see, still very, very bullish because it's following what I can only anticipate as being an ending diagonal. So we've got the first wave, the second, we're working on our third, which I think can come in and test this trend line once again. Then we've got the fourth to follow. The, the, the low of that will have to be determined once we know where our third wave high comes in. Um, but then we can anticipate another big blow off top to materialize after that. Now, this is the ending five waves. So this is the ending. This ending diagonal is the ending part in a much, much bigger sequence here, which develops all following the Great Depression in 1929. So 1932, it bottomed out the Great Depression. And then we've just absolutely flown from there where we've basically got this one two, third wave into here. Then the stagflationary 60s, 70s. Uh, again, it's that expanding triangle, which you can see here also, uh, which terminates here. And then you get a fifth wave, which keeps forming these ending fifth waves again and again. And no doubt it's really going to take us into the upper warning line of this pitchfork as we can see the end of all these fifth waves that keep getting prolonged. So <clears throat> here it starts the fifth wave, We've got a wave one, a two. And then from here, the third wave brings us into here. Fourth wave is a, an expanded flat, finishing with our uh, financial crisis 2008. And then we got the fifth wave, okay? So the fifth wave here is a wave one, two, and then a one, two, three, four, five to make the three. And then the fourth wave is that expanding triangle, just like the stagflationary 60s, 70s. And then we've got the fifth wave to follow, which is the, the as we've mentioned earlier, the one, the two, the three, and the four, and the five which I anticipate will eventually take us into the upper warning line before we get a major, major substantial crash. That is for another video. Could be very significant. Well, will be very significant, obviously. Uh, but the timing of all of that really depends on lots of things. So we'll leave that till 
another video. So this is just addressing the bigger Elliott Wave count that we're looking out for on Bitcoin. So it's this ending diagonal starting from the uh, the COVID sell-off, which was here. So it's a very similar play out that we're looking out for. Going to bring up the log scale now for Bitcoin. So as I say, ending diagonal starts here. So here it started roughly September 2020. So it's not completely in sync with the uh, the Dow Jones, which started in March 2020. But you can appreciate on the higher time frames, it's very close to that kind of timing and uh, I'm looking at the same kind of scenario. So we're looking at a test of the trend line connecting the highs here when looking at this uh, ending diagonal. And essentially I'm looking for confluence of this trend line with the pitchfork that we're currently adhering to very, very nicely. If we go down on the daily time frame to look at this pitchfork in a bit more detail, we've got the uh, initial two waves. So the First wave here, second wave here. That's the these are the pivot lines for our original pitchfork here. So we're following a steep gradient. So it's the original pitchfork that we're using, and uh, you can see the important thing was that the lower warning line didn't get broken here as we just went sideways going into the the presidential election. Um, then obviously we've broken out. So we did dip down to 50k. Lots of people I know were talking about another lower low before that happened. Eventually, I was saying that that's very unlikely to occur because of the fact as, as we got into closer to the US election, there wasn't room to come down again without breaching the pitchfork, which just didn't look like happening. And um, and look at the surge since we've broken out to the upside. So it was around 70k that you could argue that we truly broke out of this range. And then it's really not looked back. It's been a, a very exciting run indeed. Um, so as I say, this is the major pitchfork that we're following now. I'm looking for a confluence with the upper median line and the major trend line here. So that's bringing us in around to 200K. Now that is obviously doubling current values in Bitcoin. Um, but certainly I think based on what has happened here with this U US election, getting a pro crypto um, uh, president and then also uh, Head of the SEC obviously announcing he's going to leave 20th of January. Also big news. Uh, he was a very obviously very opposed to crypto, in particular Bitcoin, uh, which could be bullish for a lot of other coins, in particular Ripple, obviously. Um, but yeah, so Bitcoin, these are the long-term targets that we're looking out for here. Okay, so now just coming down to the lower time frames, let's see what might happen here. Uh, it's worth just addressing the invalidation point for the whole bullish scenario. So the true invalidation is the lower warning line of this pitchfork. If we leave that now, I'd be very, very concerned for crypto. But we can probably have a more sensitive approach to where this invalidation should be triggered. And I think the low, this lower median line is probably the most appropriate invalidation point because I certainly... <clears throat> that would be the true break of the trend coming beneath here. But the way things are moving, it's very fast paced. It really shouldn't be coming beneath this low mean line. So there's no reason to hold on to any longs, in my opinion, if it were to come down beneath 81K. Yeah, should not be dipping anywhere near this level. But the key take home from this video now will be how we can interpret this bit of price action here. What is going on? Has it bottomed? Are we going to see a bigger sell off? You know, very many people. Once a move has really materialized, you know, we've gone from 50K into 100K in a relatively short space of time. OK, it was it was obviously some people might have found it a difficult call. Um and R in whether it's going to go up or is it going to capitulate down to 15K, for example. Now, there's no thoughts of those big moves to the downside. Everyone's wishing they had got in and gotten a, on a long position. And now people are wondering where they can get in again should there be any sell off. So everyone's looking out for these dips and they're all wondering, is this the end of the dip? The problem is when people say, oh, I'll just buy the next dip. The problem is when Bitcoin sells off, they're usually terrified at this point. But it's actually these kind of points where we may be getting bullish. So what are the reasons to be bullish at this point here? OK, so there's several reasons. First of all, I see this as one big consolidation here. OK, one big consolidation. I know some people see this as a consolidation, uh, a breakout and then another correction. Yes, it's a breakout, but clearly gone up since this kind of bit of consolidation here. We've gone up in a three wavish move, very overlapping waves, looks very corrective. I don't believe this 
This is one big accumulation phase in my opinion. And I don't think it's finished. Well, sorry, I, th I believe it's now finished. But uh, yeah, I believe we're now about to break out of that. So it hadn't finished here. It was all, this was all still the accumulation phase, the sideways uh, consolidation, getting ready for the big move to the upside. So essentially some kind of running flat scenario that we're looking at. So um, yeah, but better seen on other coins, in particular Doge. Now Doge is a coin that is the most of, it's of greatest interest to me. I cover this in cryptology on a weekly basis because it's the coin of greatest interest. I always like to cover the coin that I'm most interested in over on my cryptology channel, which I do a weekly video on. Um, and I believe the, the greatest gains, the greatest upside can be found in Doge. Now, I'm just pulling up this chart here um, because you can appreciate the consolidation all being part and parcel of the same big order block here this accumulation phase okay here it's much more apparent so it's you've not got on bitcoin this b leg this three wavish move was much more exaggerated on bitcoin okay here on doge it's much more clear and easier to see that we've got some kind of double three running double three scenario and also you've got the parallel lines yeah the parallel channel connecting the highs and lows here on the log scale okay so is this just a dead cat bounce getting ready to roll over or are we actually bottoming out here? Now, my opinion is that we're probably bottoming out here and there's a few other reasons for that. So coming back to our Bitcoin chart. So one is so several reasons, to be honest. So one is the, the bigger consolidation as demonstrated by Dogecoin. Next is simply just testing pre the previous consolidation here. The highs this here here is now being flipped to support okay so resistance being flipped to support secondly so thirdly in fact uh we've hit a pitchfork lower warning line quite nicely so let's go on the hourly we can see that a bit better so first pivot second and third basically that's your first wave that's your second is your third wave coming down here um so yeah lower warning line previous resistance flipped to support this all being one big accumulation phase as per the dogecoin chart and then the most important feature here, one that most people will overlook, is our Camarilla pivots, okay? We're gonna go through all the Camarilla pivots. It's the four hourly that is of greatest interest right now, but we're gonna start with the, on the monthly time frame. I'm gonna bring on the pivots, and we're gonna take off everything else, and we're gonna zoom right in. So first of all, Camarilla pivots, incredibly useful, depending on how you use them, but I go into this in a, in a lot of detail over on my, on my course uh, and, I, and I review them regularly uh, within each weekly cryptology video that I do um, but basically yeah so we this year incredibly bullish despite these dips here on the monthly time frame beneath the R4 we've always put closing candles above the R4 yeah it was a really really bullish sign and it just going into that US election again it was another reason that, that the, the likely breakout was to the upside was because there was just no time just going into the US election for it to go down and come back up again, just because it had to finish the month of October above 57.8K being the R4. And obviously that end of October was just prior to the US election. So it was about just getting that, excluding the possible scenarios going into the election. And it allowed for a great opportunity to trade to the upside. So yeah, this is on the monthly time frame Now no longer relevant because obviously no pivot lines all the way up here. Same on the daily. If we go on the daily, when the pivot lines decide to load up, let's. Okay. Sorry about this, computer's taking its time. Here we go. Uh, so, yeah, clearly very bullish month for November, absolutely obliterating the R4. Okay, so not particularly relevant here. So, four hourly is where it matters. Okay, this is key. So, last week's price action, what happened? Where do we finish? So, obviously very strong, open the week, uh, going into the R3, slight resistance, broke through, used it as support, then into the R4, ranged around it, then we got above the R4, but the big question is, where did we close the week? Now, it could very have easily, you can see it started to come down here, it could very easily have finished the week beneath the R4, which wouldn't be a huge show of weakness, 
but it, it would have been concerning. It, it was on course to finish, finish the week very strong, finishing above the R4. If it failed to finish get above the R4, there would be concerns of a potential big sell-off. The fact that you then got, in the last moment, this green candle taking us above the R4, which was at 97K, to finish the week, told you that the subsequent week, i.e. this week, was likely to be bullish, okay? Which basically means you're looking for support off of either the S3 or S4, okay? S3, yes, a little bit of a, a bounce here, not sufficient, and we had another big sell-off. Until we reached the S4, around 92K, a wick beneath it all the way down to 91.5K, but now we're getting that strength coming back, the green candle here, okay? Now, is it is it okay now to say that we are on course to take out 100k and keep surging to the upside? No, not yet. We need to break out of this downward trend, which I use my pitchfork for. It's this one here. I'd want to see us at least get through the upper median line. However, I'm quite... I'm happy to take on a bit of risk, uh, acknowledging my strategy, where I believe that the S4 is going to act as good support here. And so... I believe it was a great opportunity to get in just off of the S4 here, okay? So everyone's to their own. Everyone needs to do their own research and it depends on their risk appetite. But for me, I'd be happy to take on a bullish approach here. There's so many bits of confluence. You've got the S4 being hit. You've got the previous resistance being hit. You've got the lower warning line being hit. You've got the Dogecoin parallel, chi uh, parallel uh, trend lines being hit, okay? Lots and lots of support, okay? Not only that, but the downward price action is typically occurring over the weekend and Monday and things start to turn around typically on a Tuesday, okay? Tuesday, US Open. So depending on what part of the world you're in, that's a different time depending where you are in the UK. Uh, where I'm based, it's at 2.30. Obviously, Eastern time is 9.30 in the morning. Um, so yeah, but after that point, usually things start to turn around, okay? So that's what we've got here. I think it's a great opportunity. I've explained all the reasons for why I think it's bottomed here. Uh, if it comes down, certainly, yeah, fine. We're going to have to be, have some caution. However, in my opinion, looking at it from a, a long-term position, I would be holding on to longs until it broke 81K. It's only at that point that I would get concerned. That's the, the lower median line of, the, of our major pitchfork. That would be what, I was, what I'm really looking out for. Um, so yeah, those are my reasons for why I think this is looking bullish here. Many people get concerned, not concerned, they look to, they say they're going to buy the dip. However, buying the dip is a lot harder than you think from a mental point of view. Everyone says, oh, I'll just buy the dip. But the problem is when it starts moving downwards this fast, people are terrified and they don't buy in. Okay. And that's why you've got to have a plan. You've got to have a strategy. I've explained my reasons here could be way too premature to get in it's certainly not confirmed the breakout to the upside as i say it would need to get through this upper median line to get you to get some true conviction but as i say obviously you're you're enhancing your risk reward opportunity by getting in lower here we've had some strong green candles already it's a good sign you've got all the support signals here Certainly, if you're trading this on an intraday point of view, your invalidation point just is beneath the uh, sorry, probably beneath this low here. To be honest, come beneath this 91 and a half k, you would have to leave any day trading position or any small time frame position. Uh, from a more longer term trade point of view, 81 k is the invalidation point. Okay, it's as simple as that. So we've spoken about invalidation, we've spoken about the setup, and we've spoken about the long term target. That's pretty much all I have to discuss in today's video. If you are interested in keeping up with the kind of weekly analysis that I do, it's over on Cryptology. All links are in my on the description to the video. You can get a free trial with it um, as well. As I say, it's all explained in the description to the video. So, uh, but yeah, Doge is where I believe the real opportunities are at, uh, and that's where I cover uh, my Doge analysis. All right, guys, we're going to wrap it up with that, and we'll see how this move plays out. All right, take care. Thank you for your attention and watching through to the end of this video. Now I know there's a lot of you watching that would like to learn how to confidently trade the financial markets independently and I also know how confusing this can be regardless of how many stressful hours that you put in. For that reason I've put together all of my trading knowledge in a complete course titled The Works. 
The works consist of thorough and jargon-free lessons broken down into a comprehensive curriculum, providing you with a holistic understanding of the markets and giving you an accelerated journey to being able to analyze and trade the markets all by yourself. And for those of you that are looking for my weekly detailed video analysis on crypto and stocks, then there's Cryptology, which is a subscription that will also give you access to the works while subscribed. For more information on what's included in the works or Cryptology, you can head on over to wave618.com or alternatively use the links in the description to this video for a limited time 50% discount offer. So I hope to see you on the other side, but in the meantime, if you would like to sample some of my educational videos, then you can check out these videos that you can see on your screen right now. Thanks once again, and until next time, take care.